Next on Top Story, in a fire season like no other, those on the front lines are up against some of the toughest conditions, and female firefighters are stepping up despite the unique challenges they face. Julie Serkin has their story and their push to recruit more women. Women make up less than 5% of career firefighters. A fire department in Oregon is working to change that. One of their efforts, a free fire camp for young girls aged 16 to 21. The things that some of these, like, oh man, it kind of makes me choke up a little bit. Um, the things that some of these girls say and how powerful we have um, been to them uh, is just mind blowing. As first responders battle dual crises of more fires and an ongoing pandemic, departments are struggling to keep up nationwide, citing a shortage of trained firefighters. Some say it's now or never to recruit more women. They are every bit as capable of doing the job as the men are. Capable, yes, but not without facing challenges unique to women. I'm five foot five, I weigh 130 pounds. Captain Karen Burricker is the first female captain in her department's history. But people see me and they're like, oh my gosh, I guess if you can do it, I can do it too. Why didn't you think that you could have a leadership role? I, I no one else was within those roles when I joined. No women? No women. Chief Amy Hannafin, president of Women in Fire and operations chief at McMinnville, is hoping to lift more women up the leadership ladder. It can be difficult if you don't have a progressive organization that maybe has those policies in place. Women in Fire, a national Oregon-based organization, has been instrumental in crafting better policies for women in the fire service. Policies like protective equipment tailored to men. It's hard for me to step up into the engine without like pulling my legs up because the crotch hangs down so low. Reproductive cancers. In some states like Oregon, cancers that impact male reproductive organs are covered. But for women, they aren't. Just because we weren't represented, you know, you don't think about what you can't see. Maternity leave policies. We didn't have a pregnancy policy when I got hired. Paid leave and limited options for childcare. We're a dual firefighting household. We have four kids. How do we do this? Hazardous chemicals. Even the gear we wear um, can be an exposure. And lawmakers like Dacia Graber are starting to take action. Why are more firefighters getting cancer and dying? All the unknowns adding to the stress women in the fire service already face. But with hard work and passion, women in the field are striving to improve conditions so that more women see firefighting as a career. Julie Sergan joins us now on Top Story. Julie, we just saw the uphill battle female firefighters are up against there in your story. You mentioned the changes that haven't happened yet, including things like benefits specific to women and the equipment that's needed. You know, it seems like county and city budgets are always squeezed. So how will they make the argument that they need this funding? Tom, the women that we spoke to on the ground are adamant that this happens now. They're working 48-hour shifts, multiple of them in a row. They're being deployed to wildfires, and they also function as medics there. And amid COVID, they're really overstretched. Now, it's not just passion driving them. We spoke to one woman, Dacia Graber. She's a firefighter of 20 years, and she's also the second woman in the nation elected to the state legislature. She's working with her partners here in Washington, D.C., to make sure these changes translate from the state level to the national level. Tom? Okay, Julie Serkin, thanks so much. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.